Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petites, and today we're gonna to talk about some spring blooming flowers that really get forced to be in bloom for the Easter holiday. And we'll talk about what you need to do in order to succeed with these plants indoors and then also outside a little bit later. So to start out with most of these flowers that you see here, we've got Easter lilies, forced hydrangeas, forced hardy bulbs, hyacinths, daffodils, tulips. We also have some florist azaleas here and some primrose. Well, how do you succeed with those inside? They're outdoor plants, right? Well, whenever you force a plant to bloom earlier than it naturally does, you've got to um, kind of keep them protected right now. So at this time of year, enjoy them indoors. That's what they are really uh, blooming for, okay? So how do you keep those blooms lasting long inside? Well, all of these plant materials actually would prefer a bright, indirect lighted area, okay? So that means no direct sun. So basically a northern exposure window, okay, because you're just getting wraparound light, you're never getting some direct sunlight through the window, or you can pull it away from eastern, western, or southern exposure windows, about five to six foot. That's bright indirect lighting where the sun, the direct sunlight won't reach these plants, okay? Why do you do that? Why do you put them in bright indirect light? So they don't heat up. The more that they heat up, the faster they're gonna flower out for you. Okay, so keep that in mind. The next thing is temperatures indoors. Now, we might like it a little bit warmer inside, but if you can keep the temperatures a little bit cooler around these plants, same thing. Cooler temperatures is going to make them bloom and last longer for you. So ideally about 55 to 65 degrees. Um, if you are enjoying them at a warmer temperature, above 65 degrees, that's okay. But try to get them into a cooler area in the evening so they can kind of rest, relax, and rejuvenate for the next day, okay? So that's something to keep in mind as well. So heat is not our friend here with all of these spring bloomers. It's really the cooler temperatures and bright indirect light that's going to keep them going and looking lovely for you. The next thing is watering. And like all of the house plants that we typically talk about, watering thoroughly so the soil is completely moistened in the pot, letting the water drain out of that pot and then repeating that process, watering thoroughly again, moistening the soil and letting the water drain out is really the best way to go. If you want to place them in a saucer and go ahead and water in the saucer and let the plant absorb the water from the bottom, that's okay, no problem. It will stop absorbing at some point. You just have to make sure that you discard the leftover water because you really don't want any of these plants sitting in water, okay? And always water in the morning. Morning's always best as well. Okay, the next thing is fertilizer. Now, to be honest, they're all blooming and they're doing their job. So you don't really have to feed them until we get a little bit later as far as taking them outside and caring for them in the garden. So hold on to that one for just a moment. What we'll do is I'll kind of go by plant by plant, kind of talk about little individual things that you can do to keep them lasting longer inside and enjoying. So for the Easter lily, this is a true lily, okay? It is native to uh, Japan actually, okay? And it can grow here in, the, in Northeast Ohio, but it needs a really, really nice protected spot. So we're gonna talk about that in a moment. But to enjoy these lilies longer indoors, you wanna make sure that you remove those yellow pollen sacs inside the flower. So just take your fingers and go ahead and pinch them off. And what that does is it will actually keep the flower from pollinating and of course wanting to produce seeds. So that's why you want to reduce or remove those pollen sacs. Okay, so do remember that. That will always make these lilies last longer. When you're selecting an Easter lily, select the ones that have the most closed buds on them. 
the more buds you have, of course, and the tighter that they are, the longer that they will last when you bring them home or take them to the office or church or what have you, so you can enjoy them for a longer period of time. And that really goes with all of your bulb type flowers, even your florist azaleas. The tighter they are bud when you purchase them, the longer lasting they are going to be when you grow them at home and then again later outdoors. Okay, so keep that in mind. With the hydrangeas, these are all what we call florist or forest hydrangeas, okay? And um, the varieties that are typically used to force hydrangeas into color at this time of year are not typically the hardy, repeating, blooming varieties that we grow outside. They are hydrangea macrophylla, but because they're forced, they're really, really easy to push into flower. They are, they kind of lose a little bit of their hardiness, if you will. So what you wanna do with these, same care as we were talking about before, bright indirect light, even moisture, cooler temperatures, that's gonna make them very enjoyable and long lasting inside. But after frost, and same thing with the lilies, I should have mentioned, after the last spring frost, that's when you can take them outside and enjoy them at that time, okay? You can plant them in the ground, you can plant them both in pots, no problem whatsoever, and then you can go ahead and winter them over and, and enjoy them as you would. The lilies need well-drained soil, okay? They can't be in heavy, wet clay, so keep that in mind. They need full sun. The hydrangeas need to be in well-drained soil, but they like even moisture, okay? And they would like a part day of sun, okay? Eastern exposure is really, really good for these. So um, keep that in mind when you're kind of moving them and taking them outside to enjoy them. Like I said, they could stay in pots. The pots can come into the garage or come really close to the house in a protected side of the home, be protected over the winter, mulch real heavy. Those are good things to do for these hydrangeas and the lilies to come back year after year. Okay, the hyacinths, the daffodils and the tulips. They are cold, hardy bulbs. Yes, they've been forced to bloom earlier than normal. Um, we do have some daffodils coming up right now naturally out in the garden, but they're kept at cooler temperatures in the greenhouse, okay? And they're, they're actually kept in a cooler uh, um, where we're growing them. So what happens is that these plants you can enjoy inside again or you could plant them outside in spring container gardens if you'd like. You can install them in the ground if you like, as long as the ground isn't frozen or totally sopping wet um, either. So these plants can be transitioned really, really quickly. And as soon as you're done enjoying them inside, go ahead and cut the entire finished blooming stalk of the flower down to the base, okay, as far as you can go. Leave the foliage up, okay, and then go ahead and transition them outside. Find a nice spot where you can plant them. Go ahead and plant them at the same depth they were in their pot and go ahead and enjoy them and they should naturalize from there. So same thing as the hyacinths as the daffodils. As soon as they're done blooming, go ahead, remove the entire flower and its stalk down to the base and then go ahead and just transition and plant them outside in containers or in the ground, okay? Same thing with tulips. Little key with tulips is that planting them, try to plant them deeper than you would the daffodils or the hyacinths, okay? The hyacinths can go maybe three, four inches deep in the ground, daffodils somewhere around six to eight inches. If you can get the tulips planted even deeper, that's gonna be good. It's gonna be better for them in order to enable them to return a few more times for you. Tulips out of all of them, out of the hyacinths and the daffodils, return the least amount of times, but at least you can get maybe a couple to three years out of their growth, okay. Now, primrose. The primrose that we have right now, um, we have some primrose out in the perennial areas. And primrose, again, is a spring blooming perennial. 
Um, they're they're short-lived. Usually you get about maybe two, three, four years out of them in the garden. They can grow inside the home. You can enjoy them, no problem whatsoever. Same thing, keeping them cooler, keeping them out of bright and direct light. If you want to plant them outside, absolutely. They can go in container gardens. They can go in the ground as soon as you get the right conditions for them to grow. Again, not freezing soil, not wet soil. And then they'll do very, very well. So transitioning them with the hyacinths, daffodils, and tulips and planting them together, great idea. Works really, really nice outdoors after you're done enjoying them inside. One last plant that has got a lot of people um, asking questions about is the florist azalea, okay? These azaleas are more of a tropical variety. Um, they're not the typical hardy azaleas that you see again out in our nursery. If you're looking for something like that, they're going to be blooming a little bit later, usually in April and May. And um, you'll see varieties like Gerard uh, azaleas. Gerard azaleas are very, very hardy. They were um, hybridized up in Geneva, Ohio. So they work in Northeast Ohio, no problem whatsoever. Florist azaleas are a little bit different because they've been forced in a warm greenhouse. They like to stay a little bit warmer, so they like to be grown indoors. They're more of a gift plant, again, where um, they'll provide you color for three, four weeks, really long blooming time inside and look really lovely for you. If you'd like to grow them year round, no problem. You can take them outside, just like you would the lily and the hydrangea, outside after the last spring frost. And then you can go ahead and grow them in a container. If you wanna plant them in the ground, that's fine as well. Again, protected areas. So like the hydrangea, like the lily, they need to be well protected. If you wanna grow them in a pot, and bring them back inside and treat them as a house plant. I'd say mid-October is when you're gonna start bringing them indoors uh, for the winter season, okay? So there are a lot of beautiful spring blooming plants, again, tricked or forced into blooming a little bit sooner than normal, but they can transition outside and you can enjoy them uh, indoors at this time of year, and then of course transition them out. Okay, enjoy your spring blooming plants.